All right, everybody. <clears throat> so I'm back. Let's see. My phone died, so we're going to just... Take up where we left. How you doing? Let me check my connection. <clears throat> yeah, so you know, <clears throat> bad. I don't think we're because the quality is. So this isn't going to be good, I don't think. Hopefully the connection is going to be better up here. Ta-da! Is that better? You guys see me now? Is the quality better? Let me know. Good. Um, yeah, I'm a tech. That's what I do for a living for networks and stuff. Um, I have AT&T and they've been screwing around with me. And long story short, they say I owe like over $400. Their billing system is totally wrong and I'm not paying it. So they are shutting me down and they've throttled me down to a really slow Wi-Fi connection so I can't stream. So right now I'm using my data plan on my phone. So tomorrow I'm going to have a new provider come in and install internet. So that's why. Um, so I just wanted to... No, Comcast is the devil. I will never go with them. Um, Comcast technicians are evil. They don't know anything. And they always have to rely on third-party companies to come out and resolve their issues. In fact, I always resolve my own Com Comcast issues. Comcast is way overpriced. So, um, there you go. Oh, you work for Comcast? No, I didn't say you're evil, but Comcast is. I do not like Comcast, and I cannot stand Disney. So those are the two evils... So, um, yeah, so I'm upstairs now relying on the, y, uh, the data plan because being in the basement in the studio wasn't getting any data. So anyway, I just wanted to finish up because uh, the last live stream died because my phone died. So we're upstairs and I'm talking with you guys. So <clears throat> just talking about, oh, no, I'm not going to say anything. Um, so, what were we talking about? I was just telling you that my aquarium is really basic. I don't have a fancy sump. I don't have fancy filtering. I don't have bio balls. They're garbage, in my opinion, because all they do is capture the waste. I don't want to have anything in my aquarium that's going to capture the waste, um, the fish waste or anything like that. Um, the less you have, better. And a lot of tanks don't even have much filtering because 
Remember, if you have a canister filter or foam blocks or anything like that for filtration, um, it's, you have to replace it weekly with new stuff. Uh, new filter blocks, wash them out in uh, tank water when you do a water change because all that uneaten food and fish waste gets trapped in the foam. And no filter socks either, Christina, that's correct. Because a lot of people just let it go and let it go. And let's not forget, filter socks, not only are they nasty to clean, but that sock is catching all the waste and uneaten food and they look black, right? Well, that sock is sitting in your sump. So what's in your water? All that stuff that the sock is catching. Um, yeah, it does capture pods too. So people do take their socks and take the pods out and they're so small. Why would you want to, it just takes too much time. So I don't have the filter socks. Um, I got tired of cleaning them and uh, <clears throat> it's just a hassle. And that sock sits in your sump. Now, the rotter tube that I make is just that three inch clear PVC pipe that sits horizontal. It sits a few inches above the water and I put a foam block in there or anything to catch the waste and then the water flows into the sump. So that waste is not sitting in the sump. Plus I just have to take the um, filter media out, throw it away and slide a new piece in. It takes five seconds. So that's the deal. That's why I do what I do. Um, that's the extent of my filtration. And I use the rock. And when I had sand, no longer sand. Um, Rossi, what's up? Rossi's Corals, when are you going to join Mile High Reefers again? We could do that soon. Um, I've been in touch with Scott just to say, hey, what's up recently. He's, he said he's been really busy, and so have I. But I miss doing live streams with him, just talking. Um, any future plans, Mush Farmer, what's up? Any future plans for your tank or channel? Mm, not really. My tank, my, my tank is basic. As I said in my last video 20 minutes ago, live stream, um, no sand bed, no corals. I just want to have it really basic because I've become lazy. And with everything going on in my personal life, I don't have time and I'm not really motivated, to be honest. So this keeps maintenance really low. Not having corals helps. And not having a sand bed helps because all the waste is blown off the glass. And it's easier to clean. Uh, with my tank, when the stream in under... 12 inches width, enough big... Yeah, that's fine. That is fine. Just the, the key thing to remember is get the widest tank or the longest tank you can. Because like I said, fish swim left to right. And if I was going to get a larger tank, which I'm not anymore, I'm just not. Um, man, the sun is blasting. That's a little better. Um, I'm just not because... Oh no, Christina, I'm glad the dog's doing better. Um, I'm still getting blasted by this light. Hold on. Hey, oh look who came to say hi. Look at everybody. All right, yes, babe. Yes, I know. Are you, are you coming to say hi? Okay, thank you. This is Leia. She's a year and a half. Yes, I know. I missed you, too. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, you're a good baby. Yes. You're going to bite Daddy? What are you doing? <laughs> she checks up on me. She goes wherever I go. She's my shadow, as German Shepherds are. Um, she's always here. So, um, what was I saying? Plans for the future. I don't... Um, I do not foresee myself getting a larger tank. I'm just not inspired. And with the home life situation going on at, right now, um, I just I just don't have the money and I don't want to do it. So that's that with the tank and that's what's going on. Um, but I'm totally happy with my 125 gallon saltwater aquarium. So if you're gonna get a larger tank, keep in mind it's always best to get a longer tank because fish swim from left to right. They don't swim up and down as much. So if you like the tall tanks, that's great. I don't because they're more of a hassle to clean. Um, 
So yeah, just keep that in mind. My 125 gallon is six feet long. And if I was going to get a bigger tank, I was looking at the eight foot long tanks. That would be awesome. Eight feet long and a little shallower. I like the way that looks. I'm not a fan of the tall tanks. I like the longer tanks. Yep, Dino, that's right. So when I saw the 125 gallon, I fell in love with it. And to be honest, it's the perfect size. It looks great. It doesn't have that large of a footprint. Um, I think they have 125 gallon tanks that are four feet long. They're taller and they're a little deeper by a foot maybe. Mm, that just didn't strike me as being good because my tangs are larger. I'd rather have the two feet length more so they can swim back and forth. Um, so that's what I recommend. So that's why I wanted to get an eight foot tank if I upgraded to it. Now, I was looking at a 265 gallon tank, but they were all like, you know, six feet long. I already have a six foot long tank. Sure, it would give the fish more room to swim around and turn around in, but I don't know. I'd rather have the eight feet long. I think they have 10 foot long tanks. That would be sweet, but I, I, I don't have any plans on up upgrading. That ship sailed months ago, months ago. I, I just, I don't want to spend any more money in this hobby. I never really had much money to spend in this hobby. Um, I did a lot of things DIY, and I, I bought things like a protein skimmer that I, I couldn't make by myself. I mean, I guess I could have, but I just bought it. Um, so I don't have a lot of money to do these things with, and even though I still love doing saltwater tank stuff, my priorities have shifted because of the home situation, and I'm getting back into guitar playing again. And that's on my other channel, Steve Rotter. Link in the video description again. So that's what's been going on with me. Um, any questions on your tanks? I did a video last week, I believe, on how to dose uh, copper by Seacom. Seachum? I say Seachum, whatever. It's Seacom, you guys have said. Hey, Chimp the Reefer, what's up, man? So, just chilling out, chatting with you guys. I don't have much more to say. I had some, I get a lot of questions every day through email or the YouTube channel on saltwater tanks. And if you really want some help, like from the members here uh, and subscribers, check out in the video description all the links to my other channels i got a couple other channels on youtube but more importantly the facebook page for rotter tube reef there are over 500 members and you can get tons of help tons of help on your uh saltwater hobby so many people i'm so proud of you guys for jumping in and helping people people post videos and photos of their tanks and if people have problems they take photos and videos of their tanks Posted to the Router Two Brief forum in Facebook, the group, and um, there's so much help available. Everyone's so quick to jump in and help. It's really awesome. I haven't been visiting there as much, but I, I have to, and I will. And RouterTubeBrief.com that will be going away in a few months because it's just not it's just not generating the traffic. So we're just going to focus on the YouTube channel and the Facebook group. So don't forget to check out. In the video description of all the videos, links to the gear I use that I get on Amazon. I get everything on Amazon and um, saltwater tank stuff or guitar stuff or any kind of stuff. Um, so that's really it. You guys have any questions before I sign off? I wanted to do a quick part two to this live stream because it got cut off because I'm filming with the phone. Anything? No? Okay. Well, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being part of this cool community. And you guys have been awesome. Hi, what are you doing? It's great to see you guys. Yeah, it's 18 inches wide. Hey, Mush Farmer, what's my next move? Yeah. 
I've been thinking, what's my next move in life? Not so much the saltwater tank channel as much. Your yellow tang is getting black spots on its outer surface. Are they like dots, like pepper flakes? Um, it could be black ick, and that's not too bad. Um, you can get... What was it? What did I use? Started with a P. Someone help me out here for the black ick. Prima something, I can't remember. But you can dose it in your aquarium. It doesn't affect your corals. Oh, what's the name of that stuff? It doesn't affect your coral or your fish or your inverts. You can dose it in the tank. Um, Prima, can't remember what it was, but turn off your protein skimmer and just dose how they say um, a couple times and that will be gone. It's called black spot or black ick. Oh, it's Christina. Hi. No, it's not Prima Fix. It's... Oh, I can't remember. It comes in a bottle like Seacum, Copper, Cuprine. Um, it starts with a P. I can't remember what it was for the life of me. But you could dose it in... What are you doing? Okay, go. You can dose it in your display tank with no problems at all. I can't remember. Just look up black spot on Google and black ick and what the dose and it'll be the something prime. I don't know. I can't remember, but that's what you dose. I'm babbling. Um get yeah, flukes in my blue tang, did a freshwater dip, maybe try that. Yeah, that'll, that'll work, but this other stuff is what gets rid of that black spot, no problem. Polymedic, nope, that's not it. Um, man, I oh, can't remember the name of it. I haven't used it in so long. But I'll, I'll think of it. Pura something? Just do a Google search for black ick or black spot. And it starts with the letter P, I believe. You dose it in your display tank, turn off your protein skimmer. For a week, no more black spot. There was a couple other things I wanted to tell you guys. So one important thing I wanted to mention, if you guys are fighting ick, the parasite on your fish, it's important to remember to keep all your hardware that you're using in buckets of fresh water like outside or in the garage because that stuff, your nets and all your stuff, that pure water will kill the parasite within a day. All right. So I always had like a couple five gallon buckets and I would just keep all the stuff submerged, um, especially if you plan on using um, your gear again in your display tank because you don't want to bring that ick back in there. Good question. By Christina, how is the green hair algae? It's completely gone. After I dosed for a week of hydrogen peroxide, 12%, 2 milliliters per gallon of salt water, no problem. Hydrogen peroxide, the food grade hydrogen peroxide, there's links to it in the video description. I turned off all the pumps and I dosed it right on top of the hair algae and it melts it away and it bubbles away. It was very enjoyable and relaxing to see it just melt away and it never comes back. Prezi Pro, that's it, Adam. Prezi Pro, thank you. Man, that was driving me crazy. Use Prezi Pro drops in your display tank. It does not affect your inverts or your corals or anything. Turn off your protein skimmer. Let that stuff in your tank. Within a couple days, you'll see the black spot drop off your fish. Your fish will be fine. Thank you, Adam. Prazzy Pro. Man, it's been so long. So thanks to Adam, uh, who wins nothing, by the way. But I appreciate the commentary. Prazzy Pro. Awesome. Um, 
that's that. So, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought now. I don't know. So, I may get a blue tang, the dory fish, but I'm all... I, and I'm probably not going to quarantine the fish. I'll just throw her in there. Um, and since I have no coral or inverts in my tank, I can just use my display tank as a quarantine tank. If I have to dose copper, I will. Xenia. Um, yeah, there was... Someone help me with this. I'm mental today, as I have been lately for most days. Um, the, what was it called? Xenia RX? I can't remember. But it kills that stuff no problem. Looking forward to seeing that in your tank soon. Yeah, Dino, I didn't want to spend any more money on the tank. Sanjay, coming from you, that sounds lazy. What sounds lazy? You're speaking in pronouns. You need to be more detailed so I understand what you are talking about. Sounds lazy. Well, whatever. Um, so I'm taking the really basic approach. To, oh, you're talking about the blue tang? Uh... Yeah, well, guess what? If you're talking about me being lazy by not quarantining, well, my display tank doesn't have any corals or inverts in it. So I can dose copper if this blue tang brings ick into my tank. I'm just being honest. Why would I quarantine in a separate tank and go through that hassle? Because the main reason why you want to quarantine is so the copper does not affect your display tank. Well... I don't have to. Oh, Nick, dude, gave me 10 bucks. You are killer, Nick. Love you, man. Thank you so much. Now I can eat tonight. Dude, you're awesome. I can eat. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> maybe I'll eat for two weeks. I'll buy two boxes of cereal. Um, so you want to have a separate aquarium to quarantine your fish. And take your fish out of your main tank if they're infected by the parasite. And you put them in the quarantine tank. And you dose that tank with copper. Keeping your main tank empty. If your tank doesn't have fish in it, the parasite will die. Well, if I only have fish in my display tank, and that's it, I can put copper in my display tank. And... Christina, the creeper, says she eats her fish. Well, I've barbecued some really good salmon and over the summer, and luckily the patio door is nowhere near the fish tank because I don't want my guys to see that. So, um, yeah, I'm just being honest. Thank you so much. You like the channel. Um, I am being honest with you guys. And if I'm right, I mean, I can't, I can't think of any other way to explain it. You need a separate aquarium so you can treat your fish with stuff that will kill your corals and your inverts. If I don't have corals or inverts, I can just put the copper solution in my tank. It's not going to hurt anything. So it's not lazy. I just chose to not have corals anymore. What if it brings in something like velvet? Well, marine velvet is deadly. Worse than um, the ick parasite. It'll kill your fish in a couple days. Um, will I be setting up another tank at any point? Maybe a smaller one, Nick. No. Next question. Okay, so I told you guys briefly what's going on here. Um, divorce? So I thought about selling this tank and just getting a smaller one. I don't know what's happening, okay? So 
No, there will not be two tanks. There, one is enough. Um, so whatever. Um, yeah, so I, I like the simple approach. I've got barely any filtration. I've got no inverts, and I have no coral. Does my tank look ugly? Eh, kind of, but I just like my fish, and it's easier to clean. No, I'm not going to give up on the channel, but that's one reason why I've been doing a video once every two weeks. Right now, I just want to chat with you guys and hang out because I missed you, and you guys keep me company. And I was getting a little depressed, just a little. So, oh, yes, I am very stronger. I am very stronger, Sanjay. I am. Thank you so much, sir. You are right. Um, and I am. So, just juggling work and kids and YouTube channels and dogs and things and attorneys and life and family. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. So I'm very strong and I'm numb, but that's a good thing. Thanks, Sanjay. I'm not the best. Attorneys? Oh, divorce. There you go. Um, man, that's a weird word. Um, <clears throat> so maybe details on that later. It doesn't matter. But getting back to the saltwater stuff, I really appreciate you guys watching. I'm certainly not the best. Can we do a hangout or WhatsApp chat at some point? Would love to talk reefing with you one on one. Um, oh yes, Copper Kevin will kill Velvet. Thank you. You're sorry to hear about that. Thank you. Um, Copper definitely kills Marine Velvet. And it kills the ick parasite, so you're totally fine. But, uh, you know. And that's another reason why when my corals passed away... Um, oh, good point, Christina. Hyposalinity, too. No. Hyposalinity does not kill ick parasite or marine velvet. Will not. The only thing that will kill it, as far as the hyposalinity, is fresh water, period. So you'd have to take your salt water level down quite a bit... And uh, your fish wouldn't appreciate that at all. Hey, what's going on, Das Cam UK? I'm bad botching your name, I'm sure. But you're from the UK. That's awesome, I'm assuming. I love that accent, especially Manchester. That's awesome. Uh, that's my favorite, favorite accent. Um, yes, you're right. I can't see who just said that. But lower, lower salt in your aquarium is better for your fish because... There's more oxygen in your water at that point, and you'll see your fish thrive at like 1.018, um, which that's what I'm going to be going to because I don't have any coral in my tank. So I'm going to bring, be bringing that to 1.018, more oxygen in the water, fish will be happier, blah, blah, blah. So the ocean is 1.026, and that's when your corals really thrive, and your fish do as well. But I don't have any coral, so I've got a little star polyps, and they'll be fine in the in the... 0 0.08, 0 0.018. It goes after the gills first, so they need help breathing. Very true. And in, 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 that parasite embeds itself into the bodies and the gills that can't breathe. That's why you'll see your fish scrape itself alongside the bottom or against the rocks to itch itself to get rid of the parasite. It's trying to itch to relieve itself. So if your fish do a scraping thing against the, the sand or the rocks, you know why. Um, yeah. So people will say, feed your fish garlic, it'll help with the ick. Nope, bullshit. Pardon my Italian. Wrong. Everything's wrong. Um, you got to get them out of there, put them in a separate hospital tank, and feed them garlic. Okay, stupid example possibly, but if you're in a quarantine area of a hospital and you're dying and they've got you in a bubble where your family can visit you, I don't think feeding you garlic is going to cure you. You have to be separated from everybody, quarantined, and treated with medication or radiation that will potentially kill everybody else. Same thing here. You need a separate tank to put your fish in to dose with the copper solution. That's right, Christina. Garlic helps the fish eat, not cure ick. And your fish can eat all they want. Yes. If I had a dollar every time I said garlic is bullshit, I'd have my house paid off. So I wish we could get a sponsor to pay us for that. 
Oh, yeah. That's because it's, what, 3 o'clock here in Chicago? So I'm so glad you guys can see us here in the UK. I love you guys. Your accent is awesome. Um, although you screwed us over on the T years ago, but that's fine. It's totally fine. Um, not you personally. You weren't even born yet, and neither was I. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. Um, I love the English accent very much. Very much. I wish I had an accent. Um, you're saying I do, but I don't. 1 a.m.? Really? Wow. You're up late. I've been staying up late, and I can't do it anymore. I'm just going crazy. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, since I don't have anything in my tank, I can just dose copper. I don't have to quarantine anyway. You have to go back to work? Okay. All right, Christina. Take care. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Um... So, anyone have any new developments on their tanks? Any new gear? Any new fish? Anything like that? My plan is that when my fish die, I'm not getting any more. I want to maybe sell this tank, maybe, when they pass away, and get a smaller one. Um, I may get the blue tang slash door... <coughs> Slash Dory Fish. That was Leia. Um, but we'll see. Oh, that's awesome. Chris, you got a... That's cool. How do you like it? You got... Uh, a lot of people had some issues with those power heads. And they had to return them and get a new one. So, I don't know plans for this channel to keep it going and to talk to you guys and hang out and give you tips and tricks and all that good stuff. But I don't think I have plans on putting coral in there. I don't have plans on putting sand in there because all that stuff costs money. And to be quite honest, I've been lazy and I'm going to see where everything pans out here in life with home before I make any moves. Damn, you had a, clown, uh, a fish with marine velvet. That's the worst. When I started in this hobby, I had marine velvet. I didn't know what marine velvet was. And I surfed the web all over the place, and I couldn't find any answers. I went to a few reef stores. Oh, Thomas, thanks for the, the terrible news. That's, that's bad, and I wish I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Um, what was I saying? I can't remember. I can't remember anything. Um... Oh, yeah, so a lazy approach with my tank. I am just kind of keeping it how it is. I don't want to spend any money. I don't have the time to work on it, and I'm not too inspired lately, to be honest. Of course, that's what I'm here for. And if you guys go to the Facebook group, um, check out the link in the video, des video descriptions. There's so many people, over 500 of them, maybe 600 or 700 now, I haven't checked, that are more than willing to answer any questions you have. There is an outstanding community on Facebook. And again, the website will be going away, router2brief.com. I don't want to work on it. I don't want to spend money on it. It's like $400 a year. Don't want to do it. I am scaling back my life, and I want to sell a bunch of stuff and just chill out and just kind of get back to basics, I think. But this channel will still keep going. And my plan, as far as right now, is to keep this 125-gallon tank and make it like an all clownfish tank. Because then there'll be less fish waste in it, less things to clean, less nitrate issues. I won't have to dose anything. It's awesome. I mean, I bought a lot of big tangs and a lot of big fish. Thanks, Matt. I think it said Matt. Um, and I, I had a little too many tangs for my 125 gallon tank, but that's okay. I took care of it, but it was a lot of extra work to keep. Um, oops. Um, I had to do a lot of extra work to keep the nitrates down and everything like that. But with an all clown tank, say I had like 10 clowns in it, it would be great if I keep that tank, all right? I don't know. I, I'm going to always have a tank. What size, I'm not sure. When these larger fish pass away, I'll probably sell this one and get like a nano cube or something, even though those are kind of boring to me after having a six foot long tank. Have you got a yellow tang, my favorite tang? 
Oh, good. Thank you so much. You know what? My yellow tank passed away. I was going to make a video on that. I just didn't want to deal with it. My nasal tank passed away. I had that guy for like three years. He just stopped eating. And my yellow tang I had for four or five years. That dude just stopped eating. He just wouldn't eat. So I tried to entice him with everything his favorite um, um, garlic, seaweed type stuff from Rod's food. He wouldn't even go after Rod's food, the frozen fish food. And I knew that was a problem. Um, he was healthy. He was swimming with the rest of the guys and no issues, no attacks. He just uh, wouldn't eat no matter what I did. And after about two weeks, uh, he died. He didn't eat. So I lost my nasal tang, who I loved, and I lost my beautiful uh, yellow tang. That dude had a great personality. They all did, all do. So now I have my fox face, my sailfin tang, my other tang, um, naso tang, and four clowns. That's it. So that's what's going on. Maybe I'll get a blue tang. I don't know. I'm going to see how things pan out here first. I don't want to spend any more money on the tank, but I would love a blue tang. Now that I have a display tank, a main tank, that I can just dose corn, um, copper in, that would be great. So much less hassle. I don't have to run a quarantine tank. How do you bounce back from the losses? Well, when your fish dies, it's sad because they're really smart, way smarter than freshwater fish. They are. Um, when I walk in front of the tank at feeding time, they go crazy. They rush to the glass and they follow me when I go back and forth, left to right. Um, when other people go to the tank, they don't. It's like they recognize you. You can see them as well as they can see you. Oh, I love the cold tang. I miss my cold tang. I'm sorry for your loss. I love my cold tang and I miss him. But it doesn't tear me up inside like it does when I've had a dog pass away. That completely kills me. That is like a black death right there. And I don't know, with everything else going on in life, right now the loss of a fish, it's not, I hate to say it, but it's just not that bad. And I'm way attached to my dogs than I am my fish. I, I don't want that to sound bad, but it's true. You know, I mean, I've got so much more affection and love for my dogs than fish. But it is still difficult, especially when you fight to keep them alive and you don't know what you're doing and they die and you've tried everything you can think of and nothing's working. Sometimes it's just their time to go. and Or other times it's something that you just don't know what happened. Um... Which is why I say you've got to be really careful when you quarantine your new fish. That's why I say dose the half, cut the dosage in half for copper because you can't, no matter what test kit you get for copper, you can't test properly. You can't. It's impossible. Everyone says it. So I cut the dosage in half. It works just as good. That way if you overdose over the half portion a little bit, um, it won't be the toxic levels. You will not get the toxic levels. The dose that they recommend on the bottle for cupramine copper by Seacom, I say Seachum, it is too close to toxic levels. So if you dose too much, your fish are going to die. They're going to suffer. Um, it's going to attack their nervous system, and they're going to die, and there's no coming back from that. I unfortunately, um, well, maybe I didn't. I was going to say I've, I've killed a couple fish when they're in quarantine, but maybe they were just really bad off with ick when I got them from the pet store, the pet store. The reef store, whatever you want to call it. Um, so dose the dose that they recommend, but cut it in half, and you'll be totally fine. Make sure you have a rock or something in there for biological bacteria, because that bacteria is going to kill the copper or the ammonia that the fish release in their urine. And I'll tell you what. I had a 45-gallon tank, okay, a JBJ, 45 gallons, and I put four baby 
clownfish in it. Got them at the same time. And 45 gallon tank, four baby clownfish. I went from no ammonia to spiked ammonia off the charts later that evening. You wouldn't think that those fish would pee that much, but they did. And if you didn't have anything in your water to counter that ammonia, they would die. Because if they breathe that in, it's toxic. They're dead. Um, everything creates ammonia. The food that's not eaten, their fish waste, even them breathing, that creates ammonia. So you don't want to ever have ammonia in your tanks. You guys know that. That's why it's important to go slow. Make sure the bacteria starts growing at a slow rate. Um, and then do a test for ammonia. Once your ammonia is at zero, for all you new tank keepers out there, once your ammonia reads zero, you can put a fish in. Now, some people do a mean thing where they buy one fish and throw it in a brand new tank so the fish goes to the bathroom and everything to create the ammonia and then the bacteria will grow to feed the ammonia and then the ammonia will be gone. That's wrong because it's cruel to the fish because that fish winds up dying. So you just want to take some shrimp from the butcher or something, throw a few pieces in, let it rot. That'll start the bacterial process known as cycling your tank and then you'll be good to go. But you've got to go slow. Because a lot of people starting out in this hobby, they want to see their nice new tank filled with fish. So what happens is, they, nice to meet you all, I have to leave now. Alright man, take care, thanks for stopping by. You put five fish in your brand new tank and then all this pee is happening. All this urine. Um, that's all a lot of ammonia and the bacteria is at such a small growth level, it can't keep up with the ammonia and then your fish will die. And people are like, why are my fish dying? Well... You've got a toxic tank filled with ammonia from their waste and you didn't have enough bacteria. So the rule of thumb is basically let the bacteria grow to defeat the, the ammonia. Now you can put one fish in. Now because the bio load is more, you've got another fish with the uh, ammonia levels rising because you put a fish in. Let the bacteria grow further to defeat that. Then you put another fish in. As the bacteria grows, no ammonia, another fish. So basically like one fish a month roughly. And I know people don't want to wait. They get excited, and I did too. Um, luckily I didn't lose any fish, but I could have easily. It's a very slow process. It's a very slow hobby. But you got to go slow, man. Or else you're going to kill your fish, dude. You're going to kill your fish. And then the blood will be on your hands. Then you'll waste 40 to to $100 or 120 bucks. So you got to go slow, man, or else. Thanks, Chris. How soon for coral? That's a really good question. Um, <clears throat> let the ammonia get to zero, and then you can put as much coral in there as you want. You'll be totally fine because ammonia will affect your coral, all right? Have you experienced with dosing phytoplankton to your tank for SPS growth? Uh, yeah, I have. But mainly I dosed the phytoplankton, um, which that's my favorite character on SpongeBob, by the way, is Plankton. Um, that dude's awesome because he's a sarcastic bastard. Sorry. Um, let's see. I dosed the phytoplankton to feed the... Uh, Mandarin Gobi that I have. Can you put coral in a fallow tank recovering from marine velvet? Yes, you can. But the one thing, fallow tank means no fish in the tank. The tank is fallow, there's nothing, no fish. Um, you can, but you remember when you're fighting marine velvet or the ick parasite, you got to keep that tank fallow or empty of fish for six weeks minimum. So your fish are in the quarantine tank for six weeks, getting treated with copper solution to kill the parasite while your tank, your main tank is empty. Um, keep this in mind. All the water in a reef store is more than likely infested with a parasite, ick or whatever. So let's say you're on week three and you put a coral from your store in your aquarium. What if that water contains an ick parasite? It only takes one drop of water 
to infect your tank. See ya, Thomas. Yes, I do use RO water at home. I make my own salt water. Yep. I always have 10 gallons of salt water at all times. Ready to go. Um, so keep that in mind. You can either have a second quarantine tank for coral only like a simple five gallon tank keep your coral in there for six weeks to make sure that any parasites in that water will die of starvation because there's no fish in there or you can put it directly in your main aquarium but then the counter starts from zero again to six weeks no uh, christina doesn't have an aquarium she is a poser and she eats fish so she's obviously in the wrong area, but whatever. So if you decide there's this coral I just have to have, if you don't quarantine that coral in a separate tank with no copper, by the way, just by itself, same with shrimp. I have a separate five-gallon tank when I get shrimp or inverts or coral. I just keep them in there for six weeks then I transfer them in there do you think a coral dip like revive would kill coral um yes but I don't want to chance it have you had to battle ick on many occasions just once and that was after I found out what I had and marine velvet and I killed it off. That's in one of the very first videos I made. Like, wow, it's going to be five years ago, this channel. Um, and never again, because I knew how to kill it, and it never came back. Um, the symptoms of marine velvet are your fish's color will fade. It'll, it'll get to the point where it looks like the body has been powdered with flour, like white. Like if you've got a deep blue fish... It's going to be like very light blue, almost white. And it's going to look like very powdery. The fish will not eat. The fish will not act like itself. The fish will not swim properly. And then it'll start swimming sporadically. Um, it'll start doing weird things like digging in the sand and flopping around on the sand. Because the marine velvet is worse than the ick parasite. It, it attacks the central nervous system. And it's just crazy. And if you put a brand new fish in your tank with marine velvet, it's going to die within two days. I did that. I kept putting fish after fish, and they kept dying after two days. And I took my water to be tested at the reef store because my test kits said everything was fine. And two reef stores, maybe even three, they said, your water's great. I don't know what the problem is. But not one of them asked me, what is my fish doing, or what are the symptoms, or what does it look like? Not one. They tried to sell me a wrasse fish, which a lot of people say that a wrasse fish will eat the ick off of your fish. That's so ridiculous. It's absurd. Because there's no way a little wrasse fish can eat ick or marine velvet off of a fish. Especially because if that parasite is beneath the skin of the fish, and there are thousands upon thousands of ick parasites in your aquarium, they keep multiplying, they got a life cycle of 28 days, they encrust in shells in your sand bed, then they launch more looking for fish to eat. And your fish are trapped in the box. Can you show your tank today? How's everything going? Um, I will do it next weekend because I don't have Wi-Fi in the house now. I'm relying on data. If I go downstairs, I'm going to lose connection because connection for data isn't too good in the house. So I'm upstairs right by the window, so we got a good connection. But I'll do that next weekend, yes. Everything looks good. The water looks really nice. Um, no sand bed, no corals. Everything's great. Um, so those are the symptoms of marine velvet. The ick symptoms look like your fish has bumps on its body like salt flakes or acne and it scrapes itself against the sides of rocks and sand like it's trying to relieve an itch and it is because there's parasites under the skin it's like chicken pox multiplied by 30 or 40 or 50 because it's parasites imagine you remember you had chicken pox well now imagine each chicken pox mark is a parasite that's eating you away from the inside it's brutal so you got to get those fish out of there and dose them with copper because once those ick parasites drop off your fish in three days when they're done feeding, um, they're going to be greeted with copper in the water and copper kills their ass instantly. All right, um, But you can't have corals or inverts in your tank when you're dosing. But I can if I get an ick outbreak or I decide 
which I'm not going to, but if I decide to get a new fish, literally I'll just throw them in my new tank, in my display tank. I'm not going to quarantine. Why? Because I can just put copper in my new tank if I want, my main tank. Because all, all I have is fish. That's it. I don't have to worry about killing corals or inverts. I don't have any snails. I got no shrimp. I've got none of that stuff, no starfish. So my tank is really basic, so I can put copper in it if I want. Plus, being fish only, I can use less salt because my salinity level is 1.018, which allows for more oxygen in the water, like we said, and the fish love that. But if you have corals, you've got to be at least 1.024. I had 1.026, which is the salinity of the ocean. Fish are great in that, obviously, and the corals really dig it. That's If you're having problems with your corals, you want to make sure your temperature is set right. You've got a thermostat that's good. A thermostat. A heater that's good. Do marine velvet parasites last year on the Chato and copepods? No, they do not. Just fish. Um, copper, good question. Copper does not kill pods because I've dosed it in a uh, display tank before with uh, a mandarin goby. And the, it's the, the mandarin's still alive, so those microscopic copepod bugs that the mandarin eats, it's fine. By the way, my mandarin is doing really well. I don't have a sand bed, and I just have rock. And my mandarin goby is doing really great. I haven't added any copepods or anything like that. Copper kills corals. Yes, it does. Copper kills corals and inverts. So I wouldn't risk it. Inverts instantly. It'll kill your inverts instantly. You might have some corals that pull through, but I wouldn't ch chance it, you know. But that's up to you. Yeah, starfish, shrimp, snails, crabs. Although someone said the emerald crabs will live through copper treatment. Those guys are like tanks. They're like, you know, they should be fine. Man, I'm answering a lot of questions. That's pretty cool. Anyone else have any other questions? Hmm? Leah's sleeping on the bed in front of me. When I leave this room, she'll leave. I come back up here. She'll come back up here. Well, I missed you too. It was great to see you. Good. I'm glad I did. You made my day too by being here. I was feeling a little lonely and I haven't talked to you guys in a while. So, here, hence the live stream. I know we're not talking about much, but I just wanted to hang out with you guys and answer any questions that you may have. And I'll show you my tank next weekend once I get the new internet service provider in here, because right now we don't have Wi-Fi. Any other questions before I end? It means a lot that you guys are there for me, and I do the best to be there for you. Do you use a calcium reactor? No, I do not. If you do, what is your stance on adding additional trace elements? Is it required? It is not required because doing a water change replenishes your trace elements. You're welcome, Sanjay. have kept a coral beauty. Nice. Coral beauties are awesome. Any other collabs with Scott from Mile High Reefers? No, screw that guy. I can't stand him. Tell him I said that, by the way. No, I, I texted Scott the other day, and he's been really busy. Sanjay, thanks so much. I really appreciate that. I really do, man. It's been a trying process. Thanks, Adam. The most fish, I don't know, 11, if I had to guess. Most of them were large tangs. Um, it's a fun hobby. It takes money. It takes patience. But I have to put my funds in different areas. The limited funds I have, I have to put in different areas of life right now. So that's why I'm not getting other fish um, and stuff like that. Oh, the trace elements question. Doing a water change replaces your trace elements. And if you have or are trying to get coralline algae to grow.